Welcome to Water Level. Today, we're diving into a detailed update on the two most important reservoirs in the United States, Lake Mead and Lake Powell. These lakes are not just scenic landmarks. They are the backbone of the Colorado River system, and their water levels directly affect millions of people across the Southwest. In this video, we'll look at the current numbers, compare this year with recent years, and break down what the daily changes tell us about the system's balance. By the end, you'll have a clear picture of how much water is in these lakes today, how that compares to their capacity, and how the levels have shifted over time. Let's begin with Lake Mead, the reservoir held back by Hoover Dam. As of Sunday, September 28, 2025, at noon, the surface elevation is measured at 1,056.98 feet above mean sea level. To understand what that means, remember that Lake Mead's full pool, the maximum designed elevation, is 1,229 feet. Right now, the lake is sitting 172 feet below that point. This gap is significant because every foot of elevation at Lake Mead represents a massive volume of stored water. Even today's small increase of 0.08 feet since yesterday represents millions of gallons flowing into the system. The 2025 chart tells the story of the year in detail. Water levels climbed slowly in January and February, reaching a seasonal high around March at just over 1067 feet. From there, levels began to fall, with the sharpest drop happening between April and June. By July, the lake bottomed out at about 1055 feet, one of the lowest points of the year. Since midsummer, though, we've seen a gradual rebound, with the lake creeping upward to its current level just shy of 1057 feet. While that's still low compared to historical norms, it shows some stabilization over the past three months. Now let's compare across years. In 2024, Lake Mead was in a stronger position. The chart shows it peaking above 1075 feet in spring, about 18 feet higher than the 2025 peak. But after June, the decline was steeper, and by late fall, 2024 had dropped below 1065 feet. Meanwhile, in 2023, the year started lower than both 2024 and 2025, with the lake near 1045 feet in January. However, 2023 experienced a big rise through spring, gaining more than 20 feet and holding higher than today's levels by the end of the year. The takeaway here is that Lake Mead's year-to-year -year changes can be dramatic, with differences of 20 to 30 feet possible depending on inflows and releases. Turning upstream, we come to Lake Powell, held back by Glen Canyon Dam. The most recent reading, taken on Saturday, September 27th, till places the water surface at 3,544.94 feet above sea level. Full pool at Powell is 3,700 feet, meaning the lake is currently 155 feet below maximum capacity. In terms of storage, that puts it at only 27.8% full, holding about 2.2 trillion gallons of water. Looking at Powell's 12-month chart, the downward trend is unmistakable. Last September, the lake was at 3578 feet. Over the course of the year, it has dropped more than 33 feet. Through winter, the lake steadily declined, losing around 10 feet between October and February. By spring, the elevation slipped below 3560 feet. There was a short-lived improvement in early summer, with levels rising by about 5 feet in June, but that gain was erased quickly as releases ramped up. Since July, Powell has been in continuous decline, sliding down to its current level of just under 3,545 feet. The inflows and outflows numbers explain why. For the 2025 water year, total inflows have been around 5 million acre-feet, which is less than half of what would normally be expected by late September. At the same time, Glen Canyon Dam has released about 7.4 million acre-feet, nearly matching its required minimum. That means Powell storage fell by more than 2.3 million acre-feet this year. When inflows are weak and outflows stay steady, the result is a net decline in elevation, which is exactly what we see in the chart. 
Another way to visualize Lake Powell's status is by its depth. At the dam, the lake is currently about 413 feet deep. Compare that to full capacity when the lake would be more than 500 feet deep, and you see how far below potential it is operating. A 33-foot drop in a single year doesn't just lower the surface, it exposes shorelines, reduces storage capacity, and changes the way the system has to be managed. Now let's look at the system as a whole. Lake Powell is upstream of Lake Mead, meaning releases from Glen Canyon Dam flow directly into Mead. When Powell is low, managers face tough decisions about how much water can be sent downstream without compromising upstream storage. The two lakes are linked, and that's why their levels often move in tandem. In years when Powell declines, Mead often struggles as well, because less water makes its way downstream. This interconnection is why both reservoirs are tracked daily, and why even small shifts in elevation at one lake can ripple through the entire Colorado River system. So, what does the side-by-side -side comparison show us today? Lake Mead is at 1056.98 feet up slightly from yesterday, but still over 170 feet below full pool. Lake Powell is at 3544.94 feet, more than 150 feet below full pool, and down more than 33 feet from last year. Both remain at less than a third of their designed capacity, far below historical highs. One detail worth noting is the difference in their year-to-year -year patterns. Lake Mead has shown small seasonal gains and losses, bouncing within a range of 10 to 15 feet this year. Lake Powell, on the other hand, has seen a much steeper and more consistent decline, with very little rebound. This suggests that Powell has faced greater imbalance between inflows and outflows in 2025 compared to Mead. Daily fluctuations also matter. At Lake Mead, a gain of 0.08 feet since yesterday is small but significant because it suggests inflows slightly exceeded outflows for the day. At Powell, where levels are sliding downward, each foot lost represents hundreds of thousands of acre feet of water moving out of storage. Watching these small changes gives us clues about how the system is being managed on a week-to-week -week basis. And that brings us to the big picture. These numbers show us two lakes that are still operating far below capacity, but remain stable enough to fulfill their critical roles. Mead is holding steady with small gains in late September, while Powell continues to edge downward as the water year wraps up. Together, they reflect the balance and imbalance of the Colorado River system as it stands today. So, to sum it all up, Lake Mead is just under 1057 feet, showing small daily gains, while Lake Powell is just under 3545 feet, marking a steep decline of over 33 feet in the past year. Both are far below full pool, but continue to serve as the backbone of water storage in the Southwest. Thank you for joining me for this in-depth water level update. If you found this analysis helpful, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe for future updates, and leave a comment about what trends you've noticed in the data. These reservoirs change every single day, and keeping track of their numbers is key to understanding how the entire river system is being managed. Stay tuned, because we'll be back soon with more updates on Lake Mead, Lake Powell, and the water levels that keep the Southwest running.